Well, good evening. Uh, We'll start with an opening prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time, these minutes to study these words. May they lead to us having a greater understanding of our daily existence in our lives and lead to more fulfilling lives. And as we do that, may the love that we feel for ourselves and each other may it spill over into those in our hearts and minds all harm free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, we are, well, first of all, we're filming from Corpus Christi tonight, um, Corpus Christi, Texas, and uh, at the time, it's gotten late, it's past midnight into 1, 1 30 in the morning, so it's actually April 23rd now, 2015. Uh, I'm down here in the lobby, actually, this is uh, the Las Brisas condominiums, uh, actually, it's sort of uh, on the beach area out here uh, there's a got nice view of the skyline of the city of Corpus Christi if you uh, look out and I even like this little light display that's back here um, it's just something that works for me as a good setting here so we are continuing with Seth Speaks uh, the eternal validity of the soul. We are um, continuing on, and in chapter 19, it is titled Alternate Presence and Multiple Focus. Um, we are continuing session 574. I'll be picking it up after the break at uh, 1021 is when we start. And um, I want to review, last week the sentence we came up with was A1 consciousness is a great framework for creativity, study, and refreshment. Um, It turns out uh, A1 consciousness is uh, the state of consciousness like when you're listening to music that you really enjoy uh, uh, or in a quiet activity you can go into this state Um, it's the for example earlier he said a one is simple to enter when you listen to music that you like when you're indulging in an enjoyable quiet pursuit you can sense the different feeling Uh, It may be accompanied by your own characteristic physical clues. You may tap your fingers in a certain way. Uh, There may be a particular gesture. You may stare or look dreamily to the left or right. Um, Any such physical clues can help you differentiate between this state of consciousness and the usual predominating one. You have only to recognize it, learn to hold it, and then proceed to experiment in its use. As a rule, it is still physically oriented in that the abilities are usually directed toward the inner perception and manipulation of matter or a physical environment. You can therefore perceive the present moment from a variety of unique standpoints not usually available. So now we're going to talk more about that and that's why his first sentence leads, he starts. This state may be used also as a step to the next state of consciousness leading to a deeper trance condition still relating however to the reality system that you understand or it may be used as a step leading to an adjacent level of consciousness two steps away. That would be the first step is into A1 and then the second step. Or the idea of two deeper. Again, A1 and then the next step. So, or it may be used as a step leading to an adjacent level of consciousness. Two steps away, therefore, on the same level from normal reality. In this case, it will lead you not into a deeper examination and perception of the present moment, but instead into an awareness and recognition of what I will call alternate present moments. 
you will be taking steps aside from the present that you know. This leads to explorations mentioned earlier in this book into probabilities. This state can be extremely advantageous when you are trying to solve problems having to do with future arrangements, decisions that will affect the future, and any matters, in fact, in which important decisions for the future must be made. In this state, you are able to try out various alternative decisions and some probable results, not imaginatively, but in quite practical terms. These probabilities are realities, regardless of which decisions you make. Say, for example, that you have three choices, and it is imperative that you select one. Using this state, you go into this state, okay, you take the first choice. The alternate present is the moment in which you make that choice. Having made it, the present is changed. And, quite clearly, you perceive exactly the way it has changed. And what actions and events will flow from the change into the future that belongs to that particular alternate present. You, then you do the same with each of the other choices, all from the framework of that state of consciousness. The methods in each case are the same. You make the decision. You then become aware in whatever way you choose of the physical effects within your body. Uh, you enter the body as you did in the way I gave for earlier for healing. With great sensitivity, you are able to see what physical effect the decision will have, whether the state of the body remains the same, whether there is a great sense of health when in it, or the incipient beginning of great difficulties. In like manner, you explore the mental and feeling aspects. Then, you turn your attention outward toward the environment that results from this alternate present. Mentally, events will appear to you. You may experience these strongly or merely view them. They may become so vivid that you momentarily forget yourself, but if you maintain your contact with this level of consciousness, this will happen seldom. As a rule, you are very aware of what you are doing. According to the situation, you can do the same thing to find out the effect of this decision on others specifically. You then return to normal consciousness going through the A1 state that you used as a preliminary. Now after a period of rest, return and make the second decision and again the third following through in the same manner. Then in your normal state of consciousness of course you make the decision that you want from the information and experience that you've received. Now the names make little differences. For simplicity, for simplicity's sake call this level of consciousness a1A. There is an A1B, you see, still adjacent to this one and still starting off from an alternate present that can be used for many other purposes. It is not as easy for the ordinary individual to enter and it deals with group presence with mass probabilities, racial matters, the movement of civilization. 
it is one that would be most beneficial to politicians and statesmen and it also can be used to probe into probable pasts as well. Here it would be of benefit in learning of old ruins, for example, and vanished civilizations, but only if the specific probable past were probed in which these existed. The next adjacent level now would be A1C, which is an extension of the one just given, in which there is greater freedom of action, mobility, and experience. Here, to some extent, there is some participation in the events perceived. There is no need to go deeply into any of these beyond this point because ordinarily you will not be involved with them and they lead into realities that have little reference to your own. They are states of consciousness too divorced and under usual circumstances this is as far as your present consciousness is able to go in that particular direction. The first state, A1A, is the most practical and the easiest for you, but often you must still have a good feeling for the A1 level before you are willing to take that next adjacent step. It allows for great expansion, however, within its limitations. Using it, you can discover, for example, what would have happened if I did this or the other. Remember, these are all adjacent levels going out horizontally. Directly beneath A1 now, you will have A2, which is a slightly deeper state using the analogy of up and down directions. It is less physically oriented than A1, you still have excellent lucidity and awareness and this state can be used to explore the past in your terms of reference within the probable system that you know. Reincarnational pasts are known to you here and if some personal malady cannot be solved from A1 you may have to go to A2 discovering that it originated from another existence. This state is distinguished by a slower breathing pattern and, unless other directions are given, by a somewhat lowered temperature and longer alpha waves, a slower frequency. There is still relation to environment, however, and awareness of it. Now this may be purposely blocked off for greater efficiency, but it is not necessary. In many cases, the eyes may be open, for example, though it may be easier to close them. Here, sensitivity is quickened without necessarily following the methods given in A1, the mental, physical, and feeling aspects of past personalities with will appear. So to repeat, without necessarily following the methods given in A1, the mental, physical, and feeling aspects of past personalities will appear. They may be perceived in various ways according to the characteristics of the individual who is in this state. This can be used to discover the origin of an idea in the past or to find anything that has been lost there as long as it is within your probability system. 
Now directly beneath this is A3. You have an extension again here dealing with mass issues, movement of land, the history of your planet as you know it, the knowledge of the races that inhabited it, the history of the animals, the layers of gas and coal, and of the various ages that swept across the planet and changed it. All right, and that's as far as we're going to go. He basically has laid out a mental map for us with an understanding of slight distinctions of various states of consciousness that we can become aware of and some of the uses of these different states of consciousness that we can use and learn from and experience different perceptions. So uh, to me it's helpful if you imagine the A1 framework, which is the one just slightly different from our normal consciousness, as sort of surrounding us completely uh, in a sphere, okay? So that whichever way you take off from that A1, which is like a platform, then from there you can reach these other aspects and levels of reality or different states of consciousness, you see. That way uh, it can help free you up with your graphic imagination of what's going on. But uh, it really doesn't matter so much what you call them or whatever. The point is that you have your normal state of consciousness, you have another one that's just slightly different that he called A1, which we discussed in our last session of what can be done there. He says that then you can go deeper from that A1 or horizontal, okay? If you go deeper from the A1, you are still experiencing the present moment, but in a deeper understanding, okay? So you can go down the A1, A, A, A1B, uh, which actually the way he did this is he said, uh, he, he said you go to A1 and then he said directly beneath that actually is A2, okay? And then directly beneath that he said uh, there is a... Well, he actually, yeah, A3, so... You, you move into the A1, and then deeper is A2, and then even deeper is A3, okay? Those all have to do with the present moment and its intricacies, infinite, poss infinite variations of uh, understanding. You go to A1, and you go adjacent to it, and you've entered probable realities, okay? Then that's why you can go there to look at understanding decisions, how they'll affect the future and you can actually experience them. As you make your choices in that altered state, he says that you can feel changes in the body, and that can help you understand your choices, how it affects it. It could be an increase in your feeling of health and exuberance, or the beginning of a, maybe a different thing that might lead to down the road toward health issues. You can explore your mental state how it's affected by the decision. You can explore your emotional state, how it's affected by the decision. And then uh, after you come back, you bring all this knowledge to your mind, you use it, you think about these experiences, and then you make your decision, and you have a better idea of how the decision will affect your life, you know, because you project it into this alternate probable futures of this present moment. Um, and there's other variations here that he talked about as far as uh, even A1, there was A1A, which we talked about, A1B and A, 
one C, then those things. So what we are going to come up with is a sentence that basically helps us remember what we learned about tonight having to do with these alternate states of consciousness. Um, while we learned more than what we'll put into this sentence, um, it will help us find this part in uh, our thinking and the book in order to bring up the rest of the information into our mind. So we can say, um, alternate states of consciousness help me experience probable realities. Alternate states of consciousness I experience probable realities in altered states of consciousness. And that's in order to understand when you go to A1A, you experience an altered probable reality and by different choices and manipulating within that, then you can decide various choices with more information of how it will really affect your future. Of course, he talked about how you can learn about the past and various other things in these last couple pages. This is just to draw our mind back to, oh yeah, this is where the altered states of consciousness section is. I can learn more about that in detail if I go to where I learned that. So, altered states of consciousness allow me to experience probable realities. Let's see. Altered states of consciousness allow me to experience probable realities. Alright, uh, today's date now is uh, like 2 a.m. on uh, Thursday, April 23rd, 2015. And uh, right now we're in Corpus, or I'm in Corpus Christi, Texas. All right. Um, again, altered states of consciousness allow me to experience probable realities. We'll have a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for allowing this time to unfold, these events to unfold, and for us to learn these ideas, be exposed to them, help us understand them, try them out, grow as we develop our minds, and in the process as we become more fulfilled in our lives and our abilities, may we pass those on to those in our hearts and minds. All harm free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Great. Thank you.